In today's video, we will turn memes into dreams. Hello friends and thank you for joining me for what I guess could probably fall into quick tips but I'm going to make it a separate video all of its own because it's a very popular topic. Social media is full of people being told off these days for getting paint in the ferrules of their brushes and this is a problem but it's not quite the problem that we often think it is. I've got a really quick and easy method for cleaning paint from ferrules of brushes and restoring them back to absolutely perfect condition and I thought a few of you may really be, uh, be able to benefit from this so I figured I'd just come and share it here on YouTube. So we're gonna to go to some down cam footage first of me explaining the cleaning part, and then we'll come back up to face cam and talk about it after that. Okay, so first of all, I wanna talk you through the pieces of equipment you're going to need, all of this lot here, and you'll notice a common theme amongst all of this. Nothing is new or clean, and that is because we're gonna be handling a lot of broken down paint, which creates a lot of mess, there's not really a ton of point in using your freshest, cleanest supplies when you're doing this because you're just going to turn those fresh, clean supplies into mucky supplies. So what we've got here is just my normal water painting pot. This is just the painting pot that I use while I'm painting. Yesterday I was doing a bit of Corax White on these Custody Shields, which is why it's a bit of a milky colour, but it is just paint water. A dirty piece of tissue. Again, this is just a piece of my painting tissue that I've just flipped over to a side that's got minimal actual paint on it so that it at least absorbs a little still. And then my pot of BioStrip. Um, if you are in the States, it can be quite hard to get BioStrip. I appreciate that. We, uh, as in me and my Discord community, uh, mostly my Discord community, full credit to those folks, uh, recently discovered there is a, a kind of equivalent in the States or a very similar product in the States, which is actually a product native to America and is much easier to acquire over there. Uh, so I'll try and find a link to that and I'll pop that in the description as well so that people can get hold of either BioStrip or um, I think it's called Easy Strip or something like that. But let's quickly go over this method. Uh, so you'll see here I've got a brush. You can already see before I zoom in on this that there's a lot of paint in the ferrule, but I will just uh, tweak my zoom for a second like this, and you can see that there's a lot of paint crusted in the ferrule on this brush. So what are we going to do about it? Well, BioStrip happens to be um, a paint stripper specifically, which means it's obviously going to remove the paint, uh, but it also happens to be non-toxic um, and it's also quite gentle on surfaces that aren't paint. Uh, it does dissolve super glue, so you have to be careful with that. But a common misconception with the way paintbrushes are made is that there's a big old chunk of glue up in here and that that's what's doing all the work. Um, the glue, unfortunately, is not really what's doing all of the work. It's, uh, it's, mostly, it's mostly just the crimp, the tightness of the, uh, of the barrel and the crimp that's doing all the work. The, the glue really is just there to, to stop the hairs from going stray. So we don't really need to worry too much about the glue. The glue is also about up here. It's not right here where the BioStrip's gonna be doing the work for us. One of the nice things about how viscous BioStrip is, you can kind of see this, um, is that it doesn't travel up hairs and stuff like that as much. Uh, it's you know one of, the, one of the reasons why it's great for this job. But what we're gonna do is just Get a good bead of BioStrip on the end of the brush. Just make sure that we're completely covered on all sides. And again, I'll just tighten up that zoom a bit for you. And you can see that we're pretty much completely covered. Because this is non-toxic and very gentle, I can actually just use my finger to manipulate it around a little bit if I do so need. Um, now one thing with BioStrip, one thing that is important, is it will strip uh, the actual finishing paint off of the handle of your brush if you get it on there. So do try to just keep it down at the tip. Now I'm just going to give this a soak for a moment and uh, we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we are back from that little time lapse, the magic of TV, and you can see my brush is still here, still soaked in BioStrip. I've just moved the pot of BioStrip out of the way and just tightened up the shot a little bit for you. So, I gave this probably, honestly, five, six minutes. BioStrip, you can give it up to about 20, 
within reason. Um, if you're if you're stripping resin with it, then in particular, 20 minutes would be like the top end because it will start to soften resin beyond that. But um, you, you normally only really need to give it sort of 10 or 15. And in the case of just a really light amount of stripping like this, then um, I think five minutes is fine. So that's what we did. And now I'm just gonna sweep away from the ferrule of the brush as I remove the bio strip. So this is just to drag the paint downwards away from the ferrule. And I'm sort of twisting as I go. And then let's hit some water, give a thorough rinse. And then a quick bit of brush soaping. If you don't have brush soap, buy some. <laughs> I'm not saying that it is uh, essential and that you cannot live without it, but I would highly recommend it. It does just, uh, just helps deep clean your brushes, get some of the, uh, you can get sort of particles that build up inside the fibers of your brush. This is something you'll particularly notice if you, uh, once you start washing your brushes, if you go a long time without noticing them, you'll suddenly become hyper aware of this. But um, it can be really good for getting things like that out of your brush. Um, and what you're going to notice after a thorough bio stripping, washing, and soaping is that uh, your brush is instantly going to be feeling a lot more supple, a lot more reflexive. Um, something you will see on this is there's still a tiny amount of paint there in the ferrule, and I can happily give this a second go and remove all of it if I want to. If I just want it to be visually perfect, then I can do that. I could even just come in with a cocktail stick here and just agitate it. This is just where the tissue can't get in. It no longer has any grip. It's no longer affecting the brush. You can see here, as I'm using a cocktail stick, it's all pushing away from the ferrule. It's, it's not stuck in there anymore. It's just, uh, the tissue is not obviously 100% effective at grabbing it, but you can see just after a little go with a cocktail stick there, we're pretty much completely clean now. There's one tiny spot there, and again, if I if I come in with that cocktail stick, that will be gone pretty immediately. But what's also happened is because I've so thoroughly cleaned my brush, you can see that the snap is back in my brush. The reflexiveness of my brush is going to feel like painting with a brand new brush. And that really is the important thing is that it's going to feel like painting with a new brush. So there you are. Uh, that is the handy dandy way to get paint out of the ferrules of your brush and uh, not attract meme lords on social media. So uh, yeah, thanks. So there you have it, harmless, easy, and you probably should already have all of those materials. I know BioStrip is perhaps the one that's a bit of an outlier, but if you've seen any of my other videos regarding stripping paint and such, you'll know that I do believe it is the absolute best stripping option available, and so I would kind of hope that most of you would adopt that at some point. At least after trying it, I think you would probably want to adopt it. So it may also just be a good time to get into BioStrip for stripping your miniatures. But as you can see, it's a very straightforward and simple thing. It doesn't take much hard work. And protecting your brushes, upkeeping them, maintaining them, it is something that's important. And it's something that I often personally overlook. As a professional painter, brushes are a tool to me. They are a tax deductible tool that my business can buy. And I kind of don't pay for them because the money that I spend on them is deducted from my overheads each year. So with that in mind, it's very easy for me to look at brushes in a really different way to how most hobbyists do. I don't personally carry out a lot of maintenance on my paintbrushes. I know how to, but for me, the time investment to maintain brushes when I have to do maybe a batch of them, say, it's usually just a bit more efficient for me to just grab another one out of the packet, pop the cap off of it and carry on. But I understand that for most hobbyists that isn't going to be your experience. Your mileage is going to vary a lot in that regard. And so I thought it was important to bring this video to maybe help explain a, a very stress-free, very simple way to do that. And to also highlight a material that perhaps you may have overlooked, you may not have thought about for helping with your paint stripping, but you may already have on hand. So I hope you liked the video. I hope you found it informative and useful. And please do try this 
this method and if you do try this method let me know what you think of the results if you liked the video you can of course click the thumbs up button you can also subscribe to the channel and enable notifications if you want to stay up to date on what i'm doing here on youtube if you really love the content and you want to support its creation, there is a Patreon campaign that you can pledge to from as little as $1 a month. That will give you access to my Patreon-only Discord chat, as well as a bunch of other features and early access to all videos that I make. So it's a pretty good investment of a quid. Anyway, folks, that's all from me for today. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm going to get out of here now and roll those end credits, but I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.